Hello, lovelies. Thank you for your patience. Our normal programming schedule is resuming. Hit it, daddy -o. And welcome to the June 2023 episode of the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. My name's Leslie and this is a podcast about yarny things. Fibre, yarn, knitting, crochet, spinning. I would say weaving, but I haven't done that for ages. All those sorts of things recorded on the south coast of the UK. Thank you for being here, whether you're new or returning. It's great to have you here, so thank you so much. Hope everyone's well. It's been another busy month. I did quite a short podcast last month and I think it's going to be about the same. I normally uh, record throughout the month and then put things together kind of vlog style and post on the last weekend. Haven't done much of that this month. It's been a bit busy. So this will basically be a two episode, a two, you know, a two part episode, I think. But that was almost a sentence, wasn't it? I do apologise. I haven't got a huge amount to show you, but I do have some yarns. Now, it's called the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast because although I have a reasonably sized stash, all these things are relative, um, I rarely have enough of the same colour to make an item, because I mostly make garments, um, all in the same yarn. So I tend to put in stripes, blocks, fades, bits of colour where I can. This vlog started as an attempt to document me reducing my stash. Hasn't worked that way. Uh, I have very generous friends. And also, when people know that you're a crafter, if someone comes by way of yarn, they sort of say, oh, would you like it? And I rarely say no, I'll be honest. I do sometimes. I do exercise a little restraint, but I rarely say no. And I also have a husband who goes away a lot and brings home yarn, which is very kind of him. <laughs> the bringing home yarn, not the going away, obviously. I'm, I've got some yarns to show you for this month, but also this month I will be drawing prize winners for the make-along. So this is the Crafting for Someone Else make-along. So this is anything yarny that you're making for another person, it's that simple. So it could be a gift that you're making for someone you know, it could be a charity item, whatever it is, is up to you. It's just making for someone else. It's run on Ravelry. There is a thread on Ravelry. I have a group which is the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast group. And there's a thread on there. That well, Actually, there are two. Finished object thread. Whips were... Uh, admissible in this when we started a few months ago that's where the finished objects grow there's also a chatter thread and that's for your works in progress you can put your finished object on there as well so people can have a conversation with you about it if they'd like to um yeah so it's it's about sort of encouraging the community to interact the drawers are done uh, this month and at the end of September and then the mall itself finishes at the end of October and I'll do a grand draw at that point. If you're unable to use Ravelry, please email me on notquiteenoughyarn at gmail.com and I will enter your item onto the thread on your behalf. So I think that's all the admin. I'll be doing the draw a little later and letting you know who the winners are. I can't show you the prizes at the moment because the day this podcast goes up, I'm going to a local, quite small fibre festival and I will be getting the prize there. Now, I know that there's a company called Isle Inspired Yarns, which does uh, natural dyeing on British breed wool. So the prize might be from there, but I might be taken by another exhibitor. Um, the festival, it's called a fibre festival and it's not just 
yarn and wool there's a lot of textile um, sewing stuff different sewing techniques there's a milliner's there um, looks like some quite interesting stuff but not necessarily yarn related but I know that Isla inspired fibres are there so I will be getting those or something else who shall know? who shall know well the winner will know when they claim their prize and I will know when I buy it and you will know if you watch next week's weekly podcast because it's weekly vlog because as well as this on a month end every Friday I was gonna say Friday evening it's Friday evening for me it may not be for you depending on where you are in the world but every Friday I put up a weekly vlog which is just really a kind of quick check in chat see how you're doing and um, just let you know what I've been up to which is not a great deal uh, mostly going to work like the rest of us that kind of thing but I'll show you any craft things I've got going on as well and I'll start with a crafty thing because I haven't spun for a little while and I very much like spinning. Spinning is my happy place and I don't know why I haven't done it for a while. But I've kind of got back into the habit recently. And what I've been doing is the lovely Barbara from the Flame and Fibre podcast does a daily vlog. And these are usually somewhere between sort of 10 and 20 minutes. And I spin while I'm watching Barbara. I found that works for me. Just a few minutes every day to spin while I'm watching her. That's a, a happy daily habit to get into. This fibre is by Witchcrafty Lady. And regular viewers will know that most of the fibre I buy is from Witchcrafty Lady. Excuse me leaning back in my squeaky chair. I'm trying to find you some more of the fibre. Oh, it's falling apart. Well, that's OK. That's what fibre does. So this is the fibre in a ready-to-spin state. I've pre-drafted this. Uh, it's called Minty, I think. And I should know what the fibre content is. It's wool. I think it may be Corriedale, or it might be Merino. I'm not sure. I apologise. I have split this in two. I'm going to do a fractal spin for this. And with a fractal spin, a spin from a braid, you have the long piece of roving split it down the middle half of it you just work on as is which is what I've got on the wheel my first bobbin you then split that fiber by length as well and the idea is that you have two bobbins of yarn of your single one has long color changes and the other has shorter color changes but they're the same colors so when you ply them together you get periods of different intensity of colour. That's the plan. So here's the first bobbin. I tend to spin quite fine plies, which is one of the reasons why I quite often do a three ply yarn. Let's see if I can show you how fine this is. I'm not the world's best spinner. Um, and so this isn't fine all the way down. Consistency is something I'm trying to get better at. But there's the first bobbin. Second one's on the wheel. And when that one's done, I'll ply them together and have a fractal yarn, which will probably be a light fingering weight looking at that. But that's OK. That's fine. I have yarns to show you that have been given to me by very kind people. I met a viewer, a lovely lady called Kathy, came to see me. She was on a tour, which involved being in a town a little while along the coast from me. And she said, can I come and see you? And of course, delighted to meet her. So she very kindly brought some yarn with her and some other bits and pieces as well. There were some very nice caramels don't know what's happened to them. This little jar of lovely stitch markers and I think these are made of clay or possibly polymer clay and they have a sort of stocking stitch pattern on the front and on the back there's increase, decrease, knit two together. So a nice little set there and she very kindly bought me some yarn as well. Now the light is very odd today it's been very sunny here 
and it's the time of day when the light comes in. I've got a light on here so I'm not too much in shadow but I will take photographs of these yarn and I will insert the photographs as well because I've got myself a little light box. Aren't I fancy? So hopefully that will give a very true impression of the yarns. But she very kindly gave me effectively a sock set. So we have two skeins, 50 gram skeins of Koigu KPM, which is Koigu Premium Merino, 100% Merino wool. And we have two in this navy. And then KPPM, which is Koigu Painters Palette Premium Merino. Um, 175 yards on this. I think these are the same. Yes, they are. And we have some very pretty yarns here. So thank you again, Kathy. That's really kind of you. It was lovely to meet you. I hope the rest of your trip has gone well. And yeah, just a very nice way to spend the day. So thank you. My himself went away. And I've got all sorts of things here. He was in Scotland, first of all. He was in Dundee. Then he was in St Andrews. He had some days in between where he didn't have commitment, so he went to Stirling. And it was when he was in Stirling, I'm going to get these, these wrong, um, that he found a shop, I believe it's called Pemberton's, which does a lot of commercial yarn, including by King Cole, my favourite commercial yarn UK spinner, manufacturer. So he got me a ball of King Cole zigzag. So this is a sock yarn. This is 75% superwash wool, 25% nylon, 420 metres per 100 grams. Um, it says on it butterfly. I don't know if that's the name of the colourway or not, but it's very pretty. So he got me that. He got me a couple of DK weight merino yarns. This one's coming out of its ball. So these are 100% merino superwash, 140 metres per 50 grams. This is called Dusky Rose and this is called Slate Blue. And I have quite a few similar yarns in a similar sort of palette that he's bought me on previous excursions. So I think I now have enough of them all to make a garment potentially. So I think a lovely merino, yes it'll peel but I don't care, cardigan, will be coming my way. He also went to a place, I think this was in St Andrews, called Alpaca Links, which did alpaca items but also alpaca yarn. Look at these lovely turquoise. This is a DK weight and it is 112 metres per 50 grams. Very pretty. He then went to, I think the place was called Made in Stirling. I may be making that up entirely. And he got me some stuff there. This is for the love of baking because he also got me some very nice uh, chocolates. Don't know what happened to them. Yes, yeah, so that wasn't the bag for them. Um, so we've got two lots of hand dyed here. And this is Corydale and Shetland. But there is a fair bit of sparkle in here. And I don't know where the tag has gone on this one. But I think it has some sari silk in it as well. I don't know if that's where the, the sparkle is coming from. Or if there's just some Stellina or something similar blended in. So I've got these two. But he also got me the wherewithal to spin myself like that. Now, as I say, I spin very finely, if that's the word. So my yarn won't look like this, but it will hopefully be as pretty. Because he got me this fabulous bat of fibre. I mean, look at the colours in this. Is that not just a thing of beauty? And this is Corydale, Shetland, Merino, Bamboo and Sari Silk. 102 grams of it. There's sparkle in here. Oh, it's going to be lovely. 
it's very soft at the moment it won't be as soft because i spin very finely it won't be as soft by the time i've finished but i hope to to make the most of these colors so those are my yarns from scotland those are my yarns from kathy and then he's just come back from lancashire i think i know what the town's called yeah it's lancashire and there weren't shops that did kind of hand dyed or this type of item but he found a yarn shop and it was the sort that um all yarn shops used to be like this where they did basically baby clothes and yarn and he got me three balls of baby lux dk which is made by woolcraft it's a double knitting weight 100 grams 60 percent bamboo 40 percent polyamide 250 meters per 100 grams so we have this lovely purple color mauve purple very nice it's very pretty orange and also this soft blue so I have a lot of yarn and I'm possibly going to buy some more because firstly uh, at the fiber festival I may treat myself who knows and also uh, Jude from the Standard Stranded podcast has got a an update. The day I put this podcast up, two hours after I put this podcast up, he has an update in his shop. And he has a very pretty looking colourway called the, the Stranded Elf, which is a special edition made in honour of his mum, the lovely Mary, who sadly died last year. And... I'm going to try and bag a skein of that. Now, I appreciate a lot of people are going to be doing the same thing. So you'll find out next month if I was successful or not. Um, yeah, so he's doing that and he's raising money in doing that yarn for the hospice, uh, which helped tr uh, Mary's treatment. And Mary lived near me because Jude used to live near me. And in fact, I quite often walk past the hospital hospice on my dog walks um so yes that's a cause that i'm more than happy to support i'm happy to support wherever it is because hospices do amazing work the fact that it's my local one is just a, a bit of a bonus so yes i'm going to try and snag a skein of that we'll see how i get on not that i need more yarn obviously but this isn't about need this is about doing good and supporting a, a small business and a local charity. Yeah, I'm going to keep telling myself that. Cheers. Hello, lovelies. I've kept that first section in, but I had a touch of vertigo, so I didn't get to go to the Fibre Festival. So, uh, nothing to show you from there, I'm afraid. Um, wasn't able to drive. I was actually going to go by train, but I was going to drive to the station. Anyway, these levels of details are not required. Um, touch wood, everything is now OK, but it did rather take my weekend out. But these things happen, so it's OK. I do have a finished object to show you in a, in a wee while, but right now I'm going to go through the make-along drawers. Woohoo! So... The pattern prize, first of all, which is from the chatter thread, I went from posts, post number two to post number 301, and the winning post from Random Number Picker was 85 M's Little Nest, which is Emma in Wellington, New Zealand, uh, who was commenting and asking a question about another another project on the thread so thank you very much Emma congratulations on winning the patent prize if you'd be kind enough to get hold of me via Ravelry or email me or however you want to do it um, and let me know what pattern you'd like up to a value of I think I said 12 or 15 US so say 15 um, then I will happily send that to you so thank you very much for being part of this, for engaging, for asking questions, for talking and being a make-along person. Thank you. That's the pattern prize. The physical prize, I don't have in my grubby little mitts. But one thing I was able to do 
was order the Stranded Elf yarn from Jude of Stranded Dye Works. Uh, I'll put a picture here. This is one of Jude's pictures, so you know what the colourway is. And I have a skein of this on its way to me in merino nylon, which I will send on to the lucky winner. And that lucky winner, um, I went from post number two to post number 192. This was for uh, the finished objects. And the winner is Kelly's Creek. That was post number 176, I think. Yep, Kelly's Creek in the USA who had made some socks for the husband. So thank you very much for taking part. Thank you for posting your entry. Please, can you let me have your postal address so that I can get that yarn in the mail to you once I have it here? Congratulations and thank you again for taking part. So those are the make-along drawers. Um, if you could both get in touch with me, so that's Emma of M's Little Nest and Kelly's Creek. If you can get in touch with me, please, by the 25th of July, which is a Tuesday. If I haven't heard from you by the end of the 25th, I will draw the prizes again. So please do get in touch because it's, it's yours. It's there for the taking. I just need the details to be able to get the stuff to you. So... Congratulations. Thanks for taking part. Thank you to everyone who's taken part. Um, I'm sorry there's only one prize in each category. I always feel bad at this point because there's so many lovely things on there, so much inspiration on there that I would like to give away a million prizes. But sadly, that is not possible. But everyone who was in the draw remains in the draw for the grand prize at the end of October. So just because you haven't won in this quarter, you may still win at the end of the, the make along. So I shall keep everything crossed for you. Cheers. Hello, lovelies. Welcome to the craft room where the chaos is plenty and the light is weird. And I have a new FO. Yay! It feels like it's been a a month where I haven't achieved much, although I have finished a garment, which I'd only just started last month, so I'm not going to complain. I'll just whinge a little. Usual service. I have finished my magpie tendency. This is my third magpie. It has a rainbow effect. I'll put some pictures here of me wearing it so that you can see it rather than just the top third of it or what have you. So this is the Magpie Tendency by Skinanigans, who is Melissa Alexander Loomis. And yes, this is my third one. The first one, I followed the pattern exactly. Now, how often do I say that? And if you follow it to the letter, it uses two skeins of four ply fingering weight yarn. So 800 metres, you're good. I didn't do that, obviously. <laughs> Um, so I made, first one was just followed the pattern straight, second one I made looking completely different with chevrons and all sorts of things. And this is my June Pride sweater. Now this top yarn, I'll go through the yarns first. Uh, this is Blue Moon Fibre Arts Sock that, Socks That Rock in the Jumping Jelly Beans colourway. And I bought this quite a while ago um, when I went to Loop in London. I've only ever been there once. Shop with amazing stuff. So I'm deciding whether or not to be critical. I got the impression they were doing me a favour to serve me. I think it's such a destination yarn shop that they have people who go in and spend a lot of money and all terribly terribly nice and I will see like oh yeah I don't think I was quite their clientele and back to that voice again um yeah I just got the impression that you know it, it was there for their benefit and we just happened to come in and buy a few things I don't think it is just me I've had other people say the same thing and I am going back a long time so it may be completely different now I certainly wouldn't discourage anyone from going there because the stuff that they have is lovely. It's stock that some place, some of the th items they sell I've not seen anywhere else. So in terms of the range of things that they offer, definitely worthwhile. Don't expect to be fawned over, I think is what I'm saying here. <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is Blue Moon Fibre Arts. 
Um, now when I got this, I thought it was a really bright colourway. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> I mean, it is, but it's not. So that's this yarn. And then I have, and I think I'm going to take this off so that I can show you the yarns rather than fight with them. So following down from the Blue Moon Fibre Arts, I then have some hand spun. And this is the hand spun that I used Witchcrafty Lady and Needle and Fred Rolex. And I made a shawl. And it's by Marceline of Hay Brownbury, and I can't remember the name of it. Sorry, Marceline. So I'm going to put the name of the shawl on the screen and a photograph of it. But that's what I initially used this yarn for. Then the cream here is by Knitting Goddess, who I think is sadly no longer producing yarn, which is a real shame. Um, and that's just some plain cream. Then some more of the hand spun. I knew that I wanted quite a long uh, magpie compared to the pattern so I broke up the hand spun with the plane and then we have a combination of yarns these are leftovers from the crochet boxy that I made I think a couple of years ago and I had two rainbow sets one of five skeins from Stranded and one of eight skeins from Knitting Goddess, which I got at the same time as the cream. So I laid out all my scraps in a in a row to rainbow them and um, just made a magic ball, rush and join them together to make uh, that ball. I did wind it as a ball, but then I had to put it as a cake because it was so pretty. I wanted to look at it as a cake, so I wound it up as one because I'm like that. So, <laughs> so that's why we have this, which I thought was bright until I saw the saturation of these colours. The hand spun, knitting goddess, hand spun, combination of knitting goddess and stranded dye works. Pattern modifications, because I made some. I actually went down a needle size. Um, I couldn't find the right needle size. As I was putting my needle tips away, I found the right needle size. I think that's because it, the pattern calls for a six and a half millimeter, and I do have one, but they're the square needles, the Nipprix. Done it again. Sorry, the Knit Picks or Knit Pro Cubics, I think they're called. I could have said that wrong as well. Oh, good lord. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't be let out, should I? Um, I did have that in a six and a half, but I didn't find that until I put my needle tips away. This is a very oversized garment, and so I didn't worry about swatching. Plus the fact that I've made two before, so I know roughly where I'm going with it and how it works with the four ply weight yarn for me. So I used a six millimeter needle. So it came out slightly smaller than it would otherwise have done, but it's still plenty big enough and makes me very happy. Other modifications. Sleeve length. The pattern gives you an option of just putting an eye cord bind off at the sleeve without any rows, or it gives you an option for a, a three quarter length. If I show you this pattern and cover up all instructions. I wanted a T length so I just put in a couple of pattern repeats and then did the I-cord bind off. The I-cord bind off at the neck and on the sleeves I did in the hand spun. Other modifications, I made it slightly longer as I said I wanted it a little bit longer so that was fine. Probably the most significant modification is that I put some short row shaping in at the back neck and I'll put a picture here which I hope will show it more clearly than I can show it flapping about. Um, very easy to do, I just did some short rows, you know, um, to about here and about here. So it just gave it a little more length at the back. I find with my original, because I'm very round shouldered, it does lift up a bit at the back. Um, of course, I have bits at the front that stick out as well, so 
not necessarily needing as much back row shaping, short row shaping at the back as I put in, but we'll live. Um, yeah, so I did that. Now, like I say, easy enough to do. Just one thing to be aware of, had I been working on the original, and if I were to make another short one, I would still want to put the back row shaping in, that would require more yarn than the two skeins because it does put a little bit more in, or you end up with a an even more cropped top. So your call. Um, I didn't do the I-cord binding at the hem. I wanted to get as much out of this yarn as I could because look at these colours people. Are they not just gorgeous? Um, so I didn't want to then have to kind of go short and put an I-cord binding or not calculate it properly and all of this. So I put a bit of pattern texture in and I started this far too early because I'm daft. If I want to have a piece of knitted fabric that is close to stocking stitch, so it has a smoothish side, um, but doesn't curl, then I do one row of knit one purl one and one row of knit. And it gives a kind of broken rib sort of texture. So that's what I've done here. Now, because this stitch pattern for the original garment has occasional rows of purl, to give this nice sort of patterning, um, I incorporated that into my piece as well. So knit one purl, one rose, knit rose, purl rose, just to give it a nice flat laying texture. I think that's possibly all the mods I've done. Sleeve, short rows, lengths and bottom edge. Yes! So here it is. My 2023 Pride sweater with rainbow. It's already pulling a thread. Oh no, it's not. That's where I'd rush and join. That's one of my little ends sticking out. There will be a lot of tucking things in on this sweater, I think. Um, I could snip them, but uh, I don't like to live that dangerously. I am a big fan of this pattern and this year I have been wearing particularly my first um, rainbow tendency quite a bit. I'm going to put this back on. That one's in fairly sort of dark sombre colours and I find that if I'm for work things, not for, for taking ceremonies because then I wear a jacket, it's more formal, but if I'm going to visit a family it's a very easy little throw over piece, over a dress. Um, Covers the décolletage, because some, some of my dresses are a bit low cut and one doesn't like to terrorise the grieving. So, um, so it works well as a kind of modesty panel. <laughs> I won't necessarily be using this for that purpose because it's a little brighter than I would normally wear to um, visit bereaved families. But I really like the pattern. It's a great throw over. I think I'll get a lot of use out of it. So yes, a finished object. Let joy be unconfined. <laughs> I think the, the back row shaping is probably the best mod I've made on this. Um, it just feels like it sits better um, and sits nicely. So I'm, I'm happy with that. What else can I say? Life stuff. Yes, our poorly relative is still in hospital. Um, and will be for a little while. We are beginning to get towards a, a potential discharge date, but uh, for the moment they're still there, still making very good progress. It's just a long process. Um, so, yeah, still heading to the hospital uh, every week to see them. And then once they're home, we'll presumably be heading to their home to see them. Wouldn't be unheard of. <laughs> What else has been going on? July, uh, a few people's birthdays and stuff, but nothing, not mine, um, <laughs> nothing in particular planned. Um, himself is away for a few things, uh, golf stuff with nephews and so forth, so a lot of it will be just me and the dog. We had work done on our house and that's finished almost. There's a little bit of painting to be done. 
that seemed to take a long time. Next month, we're having some work done on our garden. Our garden is very overgrown. It's We've lived in this house, oh, eight years, nine years. And when we first moved in, my sister, who is a bit of a one with a chainsaw, not terrifying at all, um, helped us to clear the garden. It was very overgrown, helped us to clear it a lot. And we kind of cut the grass and that sort of thing, but we are not gardeners. With the best will in the world, we are not gardeners. And so we're getting someone in to have a good old go because it's got quite overgrown again. Um, we have a lot of, it's a very established garden. It's very mature. It's got a lot of trees and shrubs. We're going to get rid of some of those because we just don't have the time, interest or inclination to kind of look after them. So gardener's going to come in with um, cutting tools and an industrial shredder and we'll clear a lot of the garden so that we can not have a clean slate. I mean, we're not going back to nothing, but to kind of get it a bit more manageable just so we can see the end of it because it's not that big but we struggle to see the end because of stuff overgrowing so so that's happening in July so more noise and machine and men wanting tea and all the things that go with having work done and it is men I mean it doesn't have to be but it is in this case so yes that will happen this month but it will be worth it when it's done it will absolutely be worth it when it's done so that's good apart from that um just plodding on. I'm still carrying on with a little bit of spinning every day as I watch Barbara and I'm most of the way, I'm about halfway through the second bobbin now so that's all good and yeah that's about it so it's quite a short one this month um, I hope that's not a problem I could sit here and waffle on about a load of old tosh but probably not worth it feeling a little bit casty on -y at the moment but I do have some things to finish, so I, I do want to start new things. But there's a project that I'd like to finish in particular. Um, the Penguono is still ongoing. I haven't done much on that. This is pretty much what I've concentrated on this month. And I've taken the marker off, but last month when I showed you, I think I'd done the two shoulder panels and I'd kind of just started on the, the front neck, I think. So pretty much I've made this sweater this month and that's sort of all I've worked on apart from the spinning so so that's where we are so I hope that you're all well um the sun is doing very strange things to the light we're having a, a warm period at the moment I hope that your weather is treating you kindly whether you're in summer or winter I hope that uh, your weather is manageable livable comfortable and that's it for this month so thank you for being here i'll see you friday if you watch the vlog and i'll see you on the last weekend of july hopefully i won't be late again um if you watch the uh, month in podcast thanks as always take care see you soon cheers bye bye